Welcome to the Black Bibliophile Podcast. The Black Bibliophile is a podcast where I, Jazz, read and talk about popular and little known books, comics, zines, and authors. To quote Haruki Murakami, if you only read the books that everyone else is reading, you can only think what everyone else is thinking. And with that, let's start the show. Welcome back to the Black Bibliophile. It's me, your host, Jazz. And yeah, welcome to the brand new year, 2020. And February of 2020. So this week, we'll be talking about River Solomon's book, An Unkindness of Ghost, which I fell in love with the minute I listened to it on audiobook. Uh... Let's talk about my brief hiatus. I have been off the map since, I want to say, December with our last episode, episode 26, I believe. And yeah, I've been ill and having a hard time, but I took that time to figure out the podcast, get things together, and try to accumulate episodes so we don't have any more lapses during this year. So yeah, um... Let's get to the book review. So, An An Unkindness of Ghost by River Solomon. Here's the summary. Aster has little to offer folks in the way of rebuttal when they call her ogre and freak. She's used to the names. She only wishes there was more truth to them. If she were only, if she were truly a monster, she'd be powerful enough to tear down the walls around her and nothing remains until nothing remains of her world. Aster lives in a low deck slums of the HSS Matilda, a space vessel organized much like the antebellum South. For generations, Matilda has ferried the last of humanity to a mythical promised land. On its way, the ship's leaders have imposed harsh moral restrictions and deep indignities on dark-skinned sharecroppers like Aster. Embroiled in a grudge with a brutal overseer, Aster learns there may be a way to improve her lot if she's willing to sow the seeds of civil war. So I picked this book because I was... A while back, like a couple, like three years ago, I had an Audible subscription and somebody sued Audible and I was a part of this class action lawsuit or whatever. And in return for the class action lawsuit, apparently we were all rewarded or some people were rewarded a free Audible credit. So I was like, okay, I'm going to use this free credit and see what's up. And one of the books on there was Rivers Solomon's book, An Unkindness of Ghosts. And... I've always heard good things about this book and I was like, you know what, I'm going to check this out. I'm going to get this on Audible, listen to it. I need something to listen to since I've been sick and it'll just help me vibe out. So I got the book, downloaded it on Audible, which I do not recommend you use Audible. Audible's like trash and they their system doesn't make any sense. You can get the exact same download on Hoopla or Libby for completely free if you have a library card to any library that works with Libby or Hoopla and it has the same reader who is amazing amazing but yeah I don't recommend you go use Audible I only used Audible because in this moment it was free and yeah that's very important that you all know that you can get this Audible this audiobook at your local library so yeah support local libraries so anyways, I got this book and I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to it, see what's up and see if I'm into it. And it was probably the best audiobook I've ever listened to. I've listened to a lot of audiobooks and, and on kind of Ghost, I couldn't stop listening to it. I would just find reasons to just sit in my office with my headphones on and just listen to it. The voice actress, her name is, I wrote it down. Her name is Sharice Booth. It took me forever. Sorry. Sharice Booth is an amazing audiobook reader and she brings this book to life. Um, Aster is a character 
who, like in the summary says, she lives in the SS Matilda in basically the space version of the Antebellum South. And she is um, an autistic, non-binary person. And I've never read a book with a lead character like her. And the way that Solomon wrote the book, they they truly captured Aster's mind, Aster's mind and how Aster's thought processes go to the point where as you're reading or listening to the story, you realize that how things are going to play out. So Aster is um, basically a doctor. She, she, or in my head, I use they, they, um, they work down below in the decks where all the black people live. And so all the lower decks are for where the labor class lives or where all the black people live. And the upper class is where all the white people, wealthy middle class live who have rights and basically don't have to work the fields, the literal fields on this massive ship um, to, to make the ship work. And Aster, we, f- we find out in the beginning of the book is a doctor um, in the lower deck. She works with the sovereign's doctor, main doctor, um, and she's taken lessons with him and she's well versed in all of these, all of the medical procedures that need to happen for the, for these characters. So she's very trusted. She's basically the right hand to the right hand on the ship. Anyways... So the story takes place in this and of course it's like the antebellum south and Aster has to deal with not only the blatant racism, the physical violence and the the demeaningness, the just the overall harshness of the situation on the Matilda. She also has to deal with being different dealing with how her non-binary vibes her the way her brain works she's othered in so many different ways that she doesn't fit in of course with the white people yet she she stands out amongst the black people and is deemed as weird or strange except around these like her core group of friends like Giselle who is this manic almost sinister character that is Aster's best friend she's she's unstable and she's like she is what what her environment her environment created her to be and the only way she's dealt with it was in these in this abrasive manic way she's broken but also not broken she's sturdy she's strong I'm in love with how River Solomon does such a great, does such great justice to these characters. They build a world where you can see and touch and feel these people. Like you can feel Aster's internal like resignation and her, her need to keep things in order to try to, make the best out of the situation that they're dealt. And then you feel Giselle literally bursting at the steams. You seems you can feel her about to explode within herself. She's like an unstable bomb. Like she's just overflowing, boiling over with all this emotion and raw hate and anger and love. And just Giselle's like, an insane microcosm of a human shoved into this small, small black, black woman. And then you have Theo, who's the ship's doctor, who, who is, um, he is the offspring of a black woman and the sovereign, the king of the ship. And he passes. And so he was taken and raised as white and he is now the right hand of the ship the ship's doctor he is literally second in command and in power yet he he's also this non-binary 
gender fluid type character who's never quite right in his skin and has this con these conflicting things he's literally in between worlds and has this conflict because because he works with Aster and he trains Aster and he confides in Aster yet he is also the second in command to the most evil person on the ship so Rivers just the character work in this book is something to to just behold it's insane like I I I fell in love with the characters before I even realized what the story really was and I like that this book is like a slow burn so Basically, the story is the sovereign. No. So Aster doesn't. Aster's mother disappeared after she was born, leaving her in the care of her, um, basically her aunt. And so Aster grew up not knowing her mother, only knowing that her mother, only knowing her mother through her mother's journals, which is this massive collection of papers and books and things that are written in this nonsensical jargon. So Aster always thought her mother was a little off, a little, a little, um, mentally ill. So she just kind of, she knew them all by heart. She memorized these books and she kept them in her secret lab and all of these things, but she didn't see any value to these books because she couldn't key into her mother's mind through all these random ramblings until one day Giselle, who also, who's Aster's best friend, who also has read these journals and worked with Aster trying to figure out what these journals are even about. One day Giselle's like, you haven't noticed that these, all these books are in code. Your mother wrote a code and she's like, and first, at first, Aster's like, nah, man, that you're ridiculous. You're also not right in the head. How can I trust you? You're a little off. You're just seeing things again. Like, it's okay. And Giselle's like, no, you idiot. Look at these books. They're in a code. And then Giselle starts to break down parts of the code that she's already deciphered. And Aster's like, well, well, wait a minute. You might be, you might be onto something. So then Aster realizes that Giselle is right and that this is a code and these journals kind of parallel Aster learning about her mother and these journals parallel a mystery death on the ship which is a death of the sovereign which is very important or not the death more the illness of the sovereign so these two moments are literally brought up at the exact same the sovereign's sick and um Esther's mom's journal are in code and the two things seemingly line up so it's very interesting and so the the book kind of goes through this mystery but also flows through um the horrors they go through in this oppressive slavery situation on the HSS Matilda in the middle of space with no one but themselves. Now I do want to have a content warning here because there is mention of rape. There is mention of, uh, assault, violence, domestic or otherwise. And, it's uh at sometimes it can be graphic but not too it's more graphic in the sense of the emotions and not not as in like Solomon is writing verbatim what's happening to bodies it's more the emotions going on in people's heads so I do want that content warning like if you are sensitive to those types of things you gotta like take a step back especially those moments happen more towards the middle to later half of the book. It is, it is implied in the beginning, but you don't get the full scope of the situation on the HSS Matilda until you get further into the book. Now, the way River Solomon creates it, it's, I could, it felt like I was in the ship. The writing was immaculate. It was amazing. I have, I have never 
wanted to bask in somebody's language as much as I did River Solomon. This book, it was beautiful. And Sharice Booth's narration brought it over the top. She did the, because all the black characters had Caribbean or island accents, which added to the the vibe of the lower deck people. And then the way she voiced the upper deck people or the white people, it was very, it gave, it gave the audio. It was like listening and watching, watching a movie or watching a play or listening to a play. It was amazing. And River Solomon creates a world that you can see, smell, touch, taste, feel like you you could feel the oppressive air and of like of when Aster and all of the people in her bunk have to go up and work the fields you can feel the overseer's glare you can feel the heat of baby the tiny star that that uh runs the ship is called baby and you can feel the heat of baby when when they hit the fields in the giant dome like space. It's very hard to explain what it looks like. River Solomon does an amazing uh, job at uh, describing it because it's like, it's insane. You should read this book. This book is, is, this book is awesome. So yeah. And Unkindness of a Ghost is probably one of the, my favorite reads from 2019. I read it towards the end of the month and it was of December and it was truly truly like mind blowing and I completely recommend everyone check this book out I didn't want to go deep into the details of the story because I did not want to spoil the story because being someone who had never like I've heard of this book and I'd seen the cover literally everywhere when it came out but I never knew what the book was about. Not even when I bought it. When I bought, not bought it, when I when I downloaded it off of Audible, I didn't read the synopsis. I just knew it had a black woman on the cover in space. So I was like, sign me up. Those are my two favorite things, black women and space. So just fucking let's go. And I just started listening to it, not knowing what I was listening to, not knowing what I was getting myself into. And honestly... That's, that was one of the best surprises and the best way to dive into a book I've ever done. Usually I know so much about books before I read them. I loved that. I just went into this blind and I was completely in awe and taken aback, horrified, enamored. I, I, I love this book. And sometimes I got frustrated with Aster, like there. I like that River Solomon is not precious with their characters. Like I got upset with Aster and moments I wanted to punch Giselle in the mouth. There were moments where I just wanted to shake Theo and just all of the characters. You just, and there are moments where you're like, how am I listening to this? How, why, why, why am I doing this to myself? Then there are moments where you're like, I will protect these people with my life. So I just, I, I feel all the things. And I think if you want to feel all the things you should read An Unkindness of Ghosts. I just, it's a great book. And if you listen to the audio, I highly recommend the audiobook version of it. You can get the audiobook version, which is narrated by Sharice Booth on Libby. I checked and you can get it on uh, Hoopla, I also checked there too. So you can get both of them and check them out and listen to them and, you know, share your thoughts. Tell me what you think. I love the audio book version of it. And I honestly think it's, I haven't physically read the book, obviously, but it's like, it's the best way to, to read this book. It's amazing. The book, the, the audio, it's just, I can't, if you're driving, if you have a long commute, if you have uh, studies, but you can listen to audiobooks, if you're going on a vacation and it's a long flight, if you just want to ignore people and stare at a wall while listening to someone soothingly tell you a story, An Unkindness of Ghosts narrated by Cherise Booth is what's up and you should 
definitely hit up your libraries or uh, Libro FM, which is an audiobook buying website that is linked to your your favorite indie bookstore. So for for instance, you can if you live in Southern California, Riverside area like I do, you can link Libro FM to uh, Cellar Door Books in Riverside and have and so when you buy the audiobook, it will be bought from that store. So you're supporting a local business and you get the audiobook and everyone wins just in case you don't have access to Hoopla or Libby in your area. So check out Libro FM, Hoopla, Libby, check this book out. It's amazing. The audiobook I'm really like pushing for because it just makes it a thousand times better. You need to hear Aster's voice, the monotone of it. You need to hear the erratic erratic passionate voice of Giselle you just need to you gotta you gotta do it you gotta it's amazing and Sharice Booth killed it so yes and Kindness of Ghosts by River Solomon they killed it the book's amazing they also have a new book coming out that I'm not sure of the title so I'll just leave that in the show notes and yeah thank you for listening to my podcast and welcome to 2020 and yeah I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can support the podcast at patreon.com. There you can actually listen to all this month's episodes early. If you are subscribed to my my patron, uh, you only have to give $1 and you have access to all this month's episodes. And then the same thing for next month. So you get them all at once early before everyone else. And you get the reading list calendar before everyone else. You get everything. You get early access. You get essays. You get uh, talks and special episodes. So it's all there on the Patreon. And that's the Black Bibliophile Patreon. If you have any questions, recommendations, you just want to say hey or want to tell me what you thought of a book I recommended, you can email me at theblackbibliophile at gmail.com. What else? You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Black Bibliophile. And yeah, that's all I got. Talk to you guys next week. I hope you enjoy. 